now that we can stack our items we would like to be able to see how many items that are stacked on top of each other so we will have to add something to our slots so that we can see the actual stack size and to do that we will have to go to the prefab folder and then we will have to select the inventory and find the back and the slot um, prefabs here because we have to pull them into the scene so we can actually alter them so take the back and drag it onto the inventory and then take one single slot and drag it onto the back and that's all we need for us to work with this so if we open up our slot we have an icon here and that's basically our item right below that we are going to have our stack size so right click on it say UI and select the text and then rename the text to stack size Okay, so we need this one to fit inside the actual slot right now it's written out here and that's not very convenient so the first thing I would like to do is to take the color and change it to white and then I'm going to change my font here you can change it to any font that you like and then I'm going to take the font size and set it to 40 as you might have noticed the text actually disappeared when I did that so I will have to go to the scale and select 0.2 in the x value and 0 0.2 in the y value okay. with that done we can scale it up right there so that it takes up the space uh, or the top edge here is colliding with the top edge of the of the slot do the same in the bottom and the right side and the left side right there so you can try to write a one number here so I would like my number to be in the bottom left. So I'm going to go to the alignment here, keep it in the left side, and say that this one goes to the bottom. But of course, it's up to you where you want it. With that done, you can take and select the slot, and you can click the apply button. So now the slot should have that stack size under it. So if you delete, um, if you delete the back from the inventory, and play your game now every single slot should have this number one on it however um, we can take the slot out here and we need to go to the stack size and delete the one so we can't see anything from the get-go because if there is one item we don't want to write one we only want to write two when there are two items stacked um, so just keep that in mind and click this uh, slot again and apply and delete the slot from the scene so now we have actually done everything we need to do out here in the editor so let's go to our script here we need to go to inventory and open up our slot script because in here we need to do some um, some writing so that we can actually work with these um, these stack sizes or actually um, we need to do something in the UI manager first so if we open up the UI manager script we'll see we have this update stack size function and right now it's not very complete there's lots of things that needs to go into it before it's done so first of all we need to update the stack size if um, what's go if, if, um, if we have more than one item so the first thing we have to do is to make an if statement so if the clickable dot my count is larger than one so if the clickables count is larger than one well then we need to do something about it we need to set the stack size so clickable dot my stack size but wait a minute we don't have the stack size on the clickable which means we need to go to the i clickable uh, there and we need to add another property we need to add a text called my stack size or stack text let's call that and then we simply need to make a get on it okay so now we can get the stack text However, the slot script will complain now because it's not implementing everything about the, the clickable. First of all, we need to make a private text called stack size. Okay? This stack size needs to be serialized right there. And then we need to right click on clickable, quick actions, and implement interface. When you've done that, it will add the my stack size right here. And we need to return um sorry the stack size right there oh no not stack size what did i call it stack size that is it yeah there we go so now we have the my stack size but wait a minute 
this one has not been assigned in the editor so we need to save jump back to unity and we need to go to the prefab folder again oh let's see it's not gonna work until we fix this just comment this one out and try to save again and go back to the inventory and find the slot then drag the slot into the scene and select the slot you can see the slot now has a stack size on it and it needs to be the child object here so just drag it onto that empty area and then we can apply again right there and delete the slot from the scene with that done we can get on with writing the code here so what did we need to do well we needed to make sure that our ui managers function here could set the stack size so clickable dot my stack size text dot text is equal to clickable dot my count to string so the stack size text is going to be set equal to the um, amount of items that is on the clickable then we need to set the color to white so we can see it and then we need to see the icon color so this is when the count is larger than zero but at some point we also need to um, change uh, remove the item and remove the stack count right so basically if the clickable count is zero then we set the color to zero of the icon and we also say clickable that my text dot color equals new color zero 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 there we go so there's one condition here we don't take into consideration let's say we have two items on um on that are stacked two potions and there's a two a number two is written in the corner I use the top item and if I use the top item well then I need to remove the text and I can do that by using an else here saying clickable that my stacks text dot color equals new color there. so this happens when we go from two a two stack to a one so the one is not written in the corner because we have one item then we don't want the stack size to be written, we just want the icon to be there. And that's why we do this, right? Because the count is larger than one, we do this. If the count is one, we remove the actual um, text. We don't need to remove the icon, we just need to remove the text. So with that done, we can jump back to our uh, slot script. And as you can see here, right now we have this function here. We're calling it from remove item, and that's the only place we're calling it. And we could go around in the code and say, well, every time we do something to change the stack size, then we need to update the stack size. Every time we do something to push or pop or clear or something on these items here, we need to write this line of code. So we need to look around in the code and find every single place we are, we are actually changing something to the items. However, this is very uh, redundant to do because we might miss some places so instead we're going to create a collection that inherits from our stack and create some events so every time we pop we clear or we push something it's going to update the stack size by default so we don't need to take that into consideration we are 100 percent sure that these events are going to do this for us so this this might sound a little confusing but um i'll explain what i'm doing right here when we get along with it so basically go to remove item and delete this line of code here just delete it and this means if I go into Unity and play it now, and I simply just add a new bag and right-click on it, it's going to be equipped, but it's not removed from the inventory. We can still see it there. And the new functionality we're writing is going to take care of that for us. So basically, I would like to go down to the um, bottom of the script and make a private function called update slot or something. Because actually going to update the whole slot, and we are going to call this UI Manager dot instance dot um, update. Oh, it's not instantiate. Um, instance my instance dot update stack size. This. 
So this function is going to be called every time something happens to change our items here. So we need to go to UI related, I think. I think I want to put it there. Right click and add and add a new class. And what do we want to call this? We want to call this one observable stack. So this is going to be our observable stack. And the observable stack is simply going to do um, whatever the normal stack is going to be doing. So I'm going to create this observable stack as a generic type, which means I can instantiate it with anything. We could uh, make it hard-coded so that it only works with items, but I think I want to make it generic so that we can use it for something else later if we need to. So generic types means that whenever I instantiate the item or instantiate the stack, it uses the I, the, the type that it's instantiated with. So um, let's see here, the slot script, for example. The slot script is a stack, right? And it, this is a generic type, which means this stack will only work with items because it's generic. I could instantiate it with integers. I could instantiate it with strings, whatever. But because I, I created, uh, this stack is created as a generic type, we can tell it what kind of data type it needs to work with whenever we instantiate it. That's generic. If I wouldn't make it generic, then I could make a stack that only works for integers, only works for items and so on. And we would have to have different classes for each data type. But when something is generic, well, we can just tell it what it needs to work with whenever we instantiate it like there. And that's these brackets here indicates that it's generic. So let's go to the observable stack and tell it that, well, it's generic. So we're going to put in a T and T means that it is a type which is generic. And I'm going to inherit from stack. And I was also just going to put T there. Okay. I'm going to make an event. I'm going to make a public delegate up here and it's going to call update stack event or let's call it update slot actually. Oh, no, stack, stack, sorry. Uh, makes sense. Update stack event. So this is our event or delegate. Then I'm going to make some public events here. And it's going to be update stack event. I'm going to call on push. This happens when we push something. We're going to have on pop when we pop something from the stack. And we're going to have on clear. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is to write new public void push um, oh, not new public let's see here public new like that and we are going to put in an item and then I'm going to say base that push and put in the item okay so the observable stack inherits from stack which means I need to call the base function to actually push the item to the stack. So this code here does exactly the same as we're doing right now out in our slot script. Nothing new is happening. It's just calling the stacks push function. But we need to call an event so we can listen to that event and check if something was pushed to the stack so we can update the stack size in our game. So we say if on push isn't null. So if our unpush is, is if someone is listening to unpush, we can call unpush. Okay. We also need to make a new function called um, pop. Okay, so pop actually doesn't need to return a void. It needs to return something because when we pop something, we take it from the stack and rem remove it, right? So we need to return whatever we remove. So the first thing we do is to create an item and call base.pop. So the reason that I'm doing it up here is to make sure that the stack has been updated before we call the event. If I would put this code down here, like so, we would call the event and then wasn't and then add the item after, which means the stack will not show the correct size. It will always be one behind because I would call the event, hey, something was added to the stack, I checked the count, well, the count is zero, and then I add something to it, and then it's one. And next time I add something, I check the count, hey, it's one, but I'm not going to write a number now because it's only one, and then it gets pushed, and the actual count is two. So I need to do this, like so, 
So I push something. First time I do it, the count is one, I check the event. Nothing needs to be written. Next time I push something, it updates to two because it pushes it. And then I check it's two and I need to write something. So it's very important we do it in the right order here that we add something before we raise our event here. The same goes down here. We call if unpop is listened to, we call it by saying unpop. And clear is basically the same. We just uh, go down here and public void clear. And then we say base the clear first of all. And when we have clear it, we say, well, if someone is listening to unclear, then we call unclear. And that's it. So right here, we are missing something. We need to return this item. So we need to go down here and say return item. Like so. So now we have created our own observable stack that inherits from stack. It actually takes the ordinary, the normal functions from stack and call them. But we are just making sure that we can raise an event every time it happens. So we in our code can listen to the stack and check whenever something happens and update something based on it. So this is an alternative to finding every place where we're using the stack and call the UI update. So instead of calling the UI update everywhere, we can go to our slot, um, where was it, there. And we can make an awake function right there. And in the um, awake function, we will have to call these events. So items await. If you go to items, you'll see that it's still a stack, but we just created a new one. So we're going to change it to observable stack right there. And you shouldn't get any errors or anything because it inherits from stack and array. All the functions are the same. So this should still work. When that is done, we can actually go down here and say items dot on pop and we assign it to the new update stack event event and we use the update stack function. Update slot, sorry. Okay. So in awake, we take our items right there. We say, well, every time we add something, we have something called uh, we're able to remove something, we have something called on pop. I would like to make this function down here listen to that and be called every time we pop something. So we can do the same if we take this and copy it a couple of times. We take on push and we take on clear. So now these events, every time they're raised, we will call the update start function. So if we save now, jump back into Unity and play the game. And if we add something, we should be able to add a, um, what is it called, a bag, right click on it, and it will disappear. And we should be able to add our potions and see the stack count go up based on that. And you can see if I reduce my health down here and I use one of these, the stack count is actually reduced. And I should also be able to remove it totally. And now I can't use any more potions because my health is full, but as you can see, the stack count now works. So that's what I want to do in this video. I apologize about my voice. Um, I'm almost losing my voice, so I try to do my best to get some videos out. Um, but again, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for watching my video. Please remember that Inscope Studios is a community found page, so please consider clicking the support link on the screen to see how you can support me and get something back in return.